Hi, welcome to a new video, and in this one we're back with Gran Turismo 7, and we're looking at update 1.15. Um, so first of all, I just want to talk about the update itself, and then really just talk about where Gran Turismo 7 is right now from my personal point of view, because it, it's a bit, well, split personality is probably the best way I can describe it. So, update 1.15, what does it bring to us? Well, first of all, we get three new cars. Um... So we've got the Roadster Shop a Rampage, which is a um, basically an American muscle car, heavily modded, lowered as far as it can go. Looks quite interesting. We've got what is now our most modern racing car in Gran Turismo 7, which is the Toyota GR010 hybrid from 2021. And we've got a um, Vision car. So we've got the Suzuki Vision Gran Turismo, which... I must confess, I'm not a big fan of the Vision cars on the whole, um, but this one actually looks pretty good. I don't mind the look of this one too much. And on top of that, we've now also had some stuff added into the GT Cafe. So we've got three new menu books. Uh, menu book 40, Enter the Lightweight K-Cup, which I've completed and was actually pretty good fun in all honesty uh, many book 41 uh, which is the vision gran turismo trophy and many book 42 enter the group one prototype series because gran turismo still can't get a handle on the fact that we already have real world racing categories so they choose to make their own ones up um, there are some conditions for being able to access those menu books and the associated races with them so um, i'll leave a link to the full patch notes down below where you can have a look at it and obviously the racing events around these have now been entered in there as well so you can play around with that uh, they do so they've also uh, adjusted the rewards for arcade races and custom races but they are still paltry compared to going through most of the race series um you can also now export directly from scapes or race photos, which, let's be blunt, is something that should have been in there from day one, um, but you can now do it. In all honesty, I still think it's easier just to hit the share button and export them that way. It's it's still more of a long-winded process than that, so there we go, in my view. Anyway, we've had some new scapes added, so a New Orleans location has been added, um, which is pretty good, being perfectly honest, and three new spots have been added to the existing After the Rain section, which again is one of the good ones. Rain in automotive photographs just works really well. And then there's a few other bits and pieces that are in there. Now, there is uh, a couple of things in here um, that kind of like get tiny mentions, but actually have some big impacts. Um, and they kind of lead on to that current state of Gran Turismo 7. The first one is the fact that um, they've tweaked the physics and the, the physics are, are, are much better than they were at launch. It's, it's kind of like a dumbed down slightly simplified version of real world physics it's enjoyable enough um i don't have any major issues with the physics they're they're not class leading by any stretch of the imagination but at least generally they're behaving as they should be in the real world which is a big step up from our mad i'm just going to oversteer on every single corner real wheel drive road cars of day one launch which wasn't very realistic at all um but they've played around with the force feedback and they didn't tell anybody about this until about two days after the patch went live where they put up another update notice basically saying er derp we messed up um and basically what they've done and i'm going to read it verbatim we have identified an issue wherein using a combination of certain steel steering wheel controllers and vehicles would cause excessively strong force feedback vibrations which could result in injury as a temporary solution, we have greatly reduced the intensity of the force feedback and torque applied by the following steering wheels. Thrustmaster TGT, Fanatec Podium, Fanatec GT DD Pro. We will continue to work on improving performances and implement more suitable force feedback sensitivity for each controller through a future update. What they've basically done is made these wheels... Um, output so low that you have to turn everything up to pretty much 10 
um, to be able to use them. And to say people are not happy, particularly those that dropped um, a not inconsiderable amount of money on a Fanatec GTDD Pro setup, um, are obviously not too happy about this, and I don't really blame them. What's typical PD is the fact that it they did this, murdered the wheels, and it was then radio silence for about two days until they updated, or rather put out this um, update notice, and then um, stealth modified and edited the patch notes around it. It's not a good look. Fix the problem in the first place. Actually test your patch before putting it out. You know, this is not good enough. You knew you had an issue. Fix the damn issue. Um, it really... Uh, but it's typical. It really is typical of the way that PD treat owners um, of their titles. Although in this day and age with licensed software, can we ever said to be truly owning our own games? But that's another conversation for another time. But that leads me on to um, my final little rant on this, and that is around the in-game economy, which PD have pulled a really interesting sleight of hand here. Um, and I'm surprised more people haven't picked up on this. When GT7 launched, the in-game economy was broken. It, it's as simple as that and was designed to push microtransactions and people complained about this quite rightly. We then had the update that basically knocked the game out for 30 hours but that's not the point here because what that also did was it severely nerfed the in-game economy even further making it even more grindy. And people, you know, went absolutely ballistic, quite rightly. The uh, Metacritic review bomb happened, etc., etc. And PD said, oh, oh, we're listening, we're listening, we're listening. And then apparently fixed the in-game economy. But they didn't. They didn't fix the in-game economy at all. All they really did, really did, and realistically did, was put it back to how it was at launch day, which was already broken. If you take something that is broken, break it further, but then just put it back to its original state, that hasn't fixed it, that hasn't made it better, that hasn't given Gran Turismo 7 a good, robust, well thought out and structured in-game economy. No, you've just returned to a broken state. Not as broke as you made it, but you know, this is, this is not something PD should be applauded for. And with this update, they've gone even further than that. Because first of all, we've had um, the first of our valuation changes from um, the Haggerty Collection. And uh, somebody over on um, Gran Turismo Planet has gone and looked at the impact on this. Now, this isn't the full impact. Um, but what they're looking at is, you know, the changes to the car prices, most of them have gone up. Um, I think only about two cars dropped in value. But whenever the prices of the cars go up, what you've also got to remember is if you need to do a refresh chassis or a new engine on that, they also go up in price. And what this has basically done is pushed the price of the entire car collection up by around about eight and a half million credits. So just overnight, the flick of a switch, they've made the in-game economy eight and a half million credits less approachable than it was before. What they've also done is they've nerfed again another meta race. People had realised that um, you could use the Tomahawk in one of the Tokyo race events and absolutely clean up and earn around about 2 million credits an hour off the back of it. Don't get me wrong, with the total values of cars in, uh, total value of all of the cars, etc., within GT7, even earning 2 million credits an hour is going to take you a long time to get them all. It's that grindy. Uh, what they've done is they put a PP cap on that particular event so you can no longer use the Tomahawk in there, which basically means they've once again nerfed the economy to remove a grind exploit. Now, they claim. I would imagine, because they've not given a reason for it. They claim, I would imagine, that they've done this because people aren't playing the game correctly. That was the excuse they used last time. Well, if people aren't playing the game correctly, that's on you guys. You're the one that built this game economy. If people are having to find grinds and metas and exploits to earn enough money in a realistic time frame to unlock all of the vehicles in the game, 
that's down to you. Don't blame the players for finding a way of shortcutting your stupidly long grind. And to be blunt, I, d I don't accept that this is just adding longevity to the game. A title that has a hundred hour campaign in it, that, that's more than sufficient for the vast majority of people. That's not what Gran Turismo 7 has. It has in excess of 300 to 500 hours to unlock all of the vehicles. And that's if you're grinding. That's not playing the game properly. That's not just racing events. You know, and everything they've done seems to push the economy in a worse direction. We got these um, endurance races, these one hour races with decent payouts, which is great. But then they put them in the mission section, which means you can only get that reward once. Now, why? That makes no sense to me whatsoever other than to force a limit on the economy. And this all, once again, just comes down, in my mind, to the microtransactions, which are still there. And this is why I personally think that Sony and PD, and I do level the blame at both parties here, have managed to pull a sleight of hand here. They launched a title with a blatantly broken in-game economy, with microtransactions, they then made that worse, rolled it back to its former still broken state, and everybody applauded them for doing the right thing, or the majority of people applauded them for doing the right thing, and have then, since that point, slowly chipped away and whittled away at the in-game economy, making it worse and worse and worse. They're not fixing this, they're not making this better, and the more content they add in, the worse that grind gets. And the more they utilise the Haggerty price adjustments, the worse it gets. Every single time that players discover a meta, and they patch out that meta, the worse it gets. Gran Turismo is a game with a deliberately broken in-game economy. And it's still the case, and it's not getting better, it's actually getting worse. Which is a real shame, because it's at its fundamental core. Yes, in terms of curated, uh, curated race events, it is light still, but it's not a bad game. It's, it's a good game with the potential for a lot of enjoyability in it that just doesn't work as a game in terms of its economy. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So that's my rant um, around Gran Turismo 7. I'm sure some of you will agree with this. I'm sure some of you will absolutely disagree with this and be uh, more than forthcoming in letting me know. It's all good. Not a problem at all. It's what the comments section exists for. Um, so yeah, if you found this video interesting or enjoyable, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content uh, comes online. Thanks very much. Take care.